the good morning if you just join us here on the show and welcome back here on prime morning it's time for us to get into news flash speak about the issues that bothers you the most and uh, here you can share your thoughts with us on our social media page as joint prime tv on facebook instagram and on twitter uh, those are places where you can share your thoughts with us if you're watching on tv uh, you can also send us your messages on our whatsapp line it's very active and uh, we'll be more than glad to read from you today here on the show news flash brings you the updates on the front page of the newspapers and also we're going to have more engaging conversation on matters of national interest and i've got two of the political parties representatives here with me in the studio as always to help us delve into the major issues that we'll be taking a look at here on the segment but of course we'd like to say a big thank you to nutri snacks for making it possible for us to have conversations here on the show as the best you can ever have please do go ahead and grab yours for yourself and the entire family and uh, it's delicious it's nutritious and it's the best on the market you can find it anywhere in the supermarket just say you're looking for nutri snacks and trust me you would enjoy it. Away from that, uh, Safari Valley is giving you an experience of a lifetime. You don't want to miss out on that. Uh, this weekend, make sure you take a trip with the family and enjoy the very nature that you've been hoping to enjoy. Now, it's uh, an uh, array of many you know, animals that you can actually see, uh, touch, and uh, you can also have a good place to sleep if you need to uh, spend the weekend over there as well. We've got uh, the zebra, we've got the lions, we've got the tigers, we've got the wallaby. And well, Rosalind has had a fair share of all of that. We, we are yet to actually experience that myself and uh, the golden girl. So we'll make our way there this weekend and enjoy the very best of what uh, Safari Valley actually gives to uh, customers and clients and all that. So please do well and go and enjoy that place. Now, step up. As your biggest television uh, game show. It's happening and it's on Joy Prime TV. Make sure you also tune in uh, every weekend and enjoy the very best of it. Now we're giving up money. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of excitement over there. You know, so many things happening on that show and you want to be a part of that experience as well. So do well and tune in and uh, enjoy it. Now, we'd like to say a big thank you to Synthes Tank for making it possible. You need water to keep a store in the house. The best you can do is to get yourself a synthesis tank. It's the best, it's durable, uh, it's, it's, it's just an amazing experience with synthesis tank. And you need to make sure you get yours for that beautiful house that you have, all right? Save water. If you're saving it, save it well as well. Trust me, it will do you a lot of good. Now, away from that, let's get into the front page of the uh, newspapers. And then we'll now get interactive with the uh, major issues that we'll be talking uh, on today. Uh, I'll be joined in the studio by Adele Uma, he's a communication team member for NDC and also Seth Ofei, uh, he's a writer and a communication team member of the NPP, he's also joined us in the studio. As uh, you know, we progress, I'm going to be introducing them to you and then you also get to know uh, the, the uh, guests that we have in the studio. But of course, yesterday, uh, let me uh, pass on this real quick. So, uh, the IGP, uh, Dr. Akofu Dampari, held uh, a media and creative arts, you know, press meeting, if you want, you know, a conference or uh, if you want to put it that way. And uh, his whole intention is to get to hear from the creative arts and also the media uh, as uh, December approaches, uh, some of the things that the uh, you know, police service are putting together to ensure that we have a very you know peaceful uh, Christmas celebration and also some other issues of consent uh, that were raised by the media and the creative ads. Some included the safety of people in December. Uh, some also had to do with the fact that the uh, movie industry is looking forward to collaborating with the police service, especially with the accoutrements that they use in uh, producing most of their movies. You know, becoming a problem, uh, getting them from the police service. The IGP actually and uh, the entire uh, team, you know, responded to some of the issues. Now, take a look at this. Uh, when I come back, I'll get into the front page of the newspapers and then we'll get a communication uh, conversation going on. Still, that's the ideas, and we should give them that recognition and let us go out there and build on what they left behind. In our environment, the challenge we have had as a people in our quest to ensure socioeconomic development is the difficulty of trying to accept that no, no single person can do it alone and no person can be at a place forever. But what makes it beautiful 
is our ability to build on the foundations of others so that we don't continue to destroy foundations built by people whom we think we were not in good terms with. It's not about them, it's about us. And it's not about them, it's about this country. And in this case, it's not about any individual, it's about your institution. And if we keep having that mindset, then you will see that no foundation will be rebuilt. The energy and the resources for building a foundation will be used to erect the walls of that foundation. So that as you go to erect the walls of the foundation built by your predecessors, we hope in your four year period, you will complete that process so that those who will come and take over from you will do the roofing. And when the roofing is done by those who will come after you, then those who will come after them will do the plastering and the painting. And when those people are done, those who will come after them will do the finishing by putting the furniture, the beds, and everything, and making it a house that is, that is habitable. It is until we do this, that we realize that we are strength, and our strength, we have strength, and our strength become powerful and productive, because everybody matters, and everybody's contribution counts. And I wish you were, as you embark on this journey. But I know one thing, you will succeed. So it is on this note that I would like, therefore, to introduce my bosses. They are my bosses because I'm the chief servant. We are all servants, and we serve you, the people. And when you are a chief servant, when you are a chief in a committee, you are the head. But when it comes to servantship, it is the opposite right, way around. So all the servants are here, I'm the chief, so I'm the bottom. So I'm having the privilege of introducing my bosses because they are the servants, I'm the chief, so I'm below them. And with that mindset, I would like to introduce Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Frederick J. And from there, I also would like to introduce our Director General in charge of CID, Commissioner of Police, Madam Faustina Andokofi. And again, I would like to introduce our Commissioner in charge of Legal and Prosecution, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Frempong. And I go on to introduce our Commissioner in charge of Operations, Director General of Operations, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Shiraji Mohammed Husseini. And I'm still going on, and this time to introduce a female, all right, so that was indeed a fruitful meeting with the IGP yesterday. Uh, it took about four or five hours, and a bit later we had something to drink and all of that. We enjoyed that moment with the IGP. And congratulations to the Ghana Musicians Union of Ghana. Uh, they were also represented, and also uh, they've elected their new executive as well. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Bessa Simons for uh, becoming the uh, president for Music and Now. Now, let's get, let's get into it. But of course, we're going to be sharing most of the conversations with you here on the show. They spoke about cyberbullying and all of that. So I'm sure uh, Prophet, when he comes on here today, uh, December 31st, uh, Prophet says, I'm sure he may probably answer to it. Nigel Gaze is our guest uh, for the big interview a bit later here on the show. Rosling has got that conversation coming, so you want to stay uh, for that as well. Now, on the front page of the Daily Graphic, uh, I'm going to go through the front pages real quick and then we'll and get into the conversation proper. Uh, the Daily Graphic this morning says, Gap Mania, funeral rites begin, and records of 14.2 million uh, patients uh, digitized. And um, uh, construction of new cement factories suspended, Trade Minister and Akosobo Dam spillage, government will restore livelihoods, Deputy Minister assures victims. Uh, that's the front page of the Daily Graphic. Now, uh, the Daily Guide of this morning is reporting on police deposit number one, 2.5 million Ghana cities at BOG, uh, caught to determine distribution. Baumia Paris lies against him and also mission to boost uh, cocoa production on course. Boyne Edu says so. And Germany's compact with Africa 
market transformation hope and uh jenna blaze says uh, speaks on that uh beer track hills one in la npp office crash uh, that's the front page of the daily guide first one away from that the daily statement is here uh, government launches national youth group on climate change advocacy electricity water restored to mepe and vehime and npp delegates pledge support for a free year akoto the big story over here says 2.5 million ghana cities retrieved from num one uh, godfrey odami is captured on the front page amount deposited at bog based on the ag advice and that's the front page of the daily statement away from that the finder this morning says delegates backing dr koto tout his proposals and solutions to ghana's problems and uh, customs intercept 11,204 pieces of uh, limitation wax prints uh, imitation wax prints i beg your pardon uh, livelihoods uh, will be restored uh, via reassures uh, spillage uh, flood victims and uh, court orders michael Nyaku to file submissions by november 10 and the Supreme Court's disqualification of Dachi Kwesin, scandalous uh, justice at Kuba speaks on that as well. Ghanaian Times is here this morning, Seth. Uh, uh, kindly let me go through that. On the front page of Ghanaian Times, uh, uh, most of our executive newspaper says, uh, Akosombo Dam Spillage, schools conduct studies and the trees. Classrooms turn into holding places as well. And WB commends Ghana for promoting simplified uh, sewage system. And develop micro insurance products to protect poor from climate shocks. A finance minister says uh, so. Relief efforts uh, amidst the Kusumbo Dam spillage. Government rolls out the emergency plan uh, to provide a prompt response to victims' needs. Uh, Ms. Fatima to Abubakar has been captured on the front page on that story. Now, man jailed 20 years for for defiling baby that's also on the front page of the Ghanaian times that'll be pretty much what the newspapers are reporting this morning here on news flash now away from that we're going to get into the conversations proper and earlier i was telling you some of the things that we'll be going through this morning now we'll be looking at the supreme court judgment on just question and actually we're actually making pronouncements on it and saying that it's uh, scandalous we also uh, put our attention to the collapse of cocoa board allow farmers to sell directly uh, to buy as president of Cocoa Farmers Association says so. And we'll be jumping on the Akosobo Dam uh, spillage issue as well. The Brian the Champ on the uh, Minister for Aggregate spoken about that as well. We're going to be looking at that. And uh, CEO of uh, Nasia Rice uh, is also accusing government buffer stock of collapsing his company as well. We'll be looking at that also here on the show. But let's begin with uh, introducing the guests in the studio. And then we'll start off with the Supreme Court judgment of Judge Equation. Uh, scandals which Artuguba is uh, claiming on that. Adele Omar is a uh, communication team member for the NDC and he's joined us this morning here. Adele, how are you doing, bro? I'm a good, KMJ. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's the family? Yeah, I'm good to see you. Fine boy, fine boy, school captain. Oh, that. And I mean, to you, I feel no matter. There's always a first day. Get out of here. But it's good, good to see you. It's good to see you again. Now, Welcome Seth Ofei <laughs> is a writer, communication team member for the NPP. Seth, good morning. How are you good doing? Good morning, boss. Everything good? Very cool, by his grace. Awesome. Mm. It's our first encounter, right? Very sure. Oh, nice. Uh, I enjoy your studio. Oh, Very is it? nice studio. Yeah. One of the best. Good for us. I'll visit it. The next place we'll be taking <laughs> you to, I'm sure when you get there, you don't want to get back wow. into the house again. I'm waiting for that day. You no, know, you just... just it uh, will be a miracle. Uh, oh, it's already there. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, CNN standard. Sure, I'll, sure, I'll, sure, I'll share that sure, with sure. you. But uh, these are the gentlemen that will be having us in the conversation this morning here on the show. But we're going to be looking at it for the best process of our uh, viewers out there. Now, the former Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, William Atuba, has criticized the apex court over the trial of Arsene North MP James Judge Kwesi. And uh, the legislature has been facing a marathon of legal issues for allegedly facing, uh, failing to renounce its citizenship, Canadian citizenship, before contesting the 2020 parliamentary elections. As you may be aware, he's gone through that processes from 2020 to 2022, where he was actually ejected uh, from parliament. And uh, there's been back and forth. He's gone for uh, by election, he's won, and all of that. But the conversation is still around the fact that uh you know the the court system is trying as much as possible to rule out on his issue now uh according to the uh former justice he says that in his own words the james judge christian's decision by the supreme court is with all due respect scandalous in that uh, the court uh, in the teeth of the settled maxim arrest adjudicator at non-quitter 
um, of the re-educated the same matter that has been educated upon by the high courts so on the merits and all that was left uh, was its execution according to the court processes and uh, he has really been venting on it let, let me get back here in the studio i, I want to start from you um i remember very well adele that we've yeah. been on this very case especially True. when the by-election you know uh, came up yeah, and we've all been trying to you know wrap our head around how this issue will end. Right. Atuba believes that it's a bit scandalous the way the Supreme Court wants to go about it, especially after the High Court has so gone on this issue. KMJ, let me say a warm good morning to you once more and a good morning to yes, my brother. Nice to meet you for the first time. And um, <clears throat> to indicate that this was a conversation we've had over the time. Uh, absolutely. And I remember on countless occasions, I indicated here that it was it was totally unacceptable. You know, that judgment that was passed that the man, his election, and he winning that election was not void just didn't make any sense. Mm. See, the Constitution makes it categorically clear that, you know, in order for you to not qualify when it comes to qualification, in order for you not to qualify to be a member of parliament, you must not owe allegiance to any country at the time of your elections. Mm. At the time of your elections, the constitution makes it clear elections. It did not indicate that at the time of your nominations. Mm. Now, even if you go back and say that it is at the time of nomination, we have indicated that the man renounced his certification as far back as November 2020, 2019, mm -hmm. before the 2022 elections. You know, the intention, you know, in crime, we always talk about the men's share. What was the intention? Mm. His intentions as far clear one year before the elections his intentions was to renounce it and he went and then filed his his renunciation he had his certificate clear two weeks before the elections of election 2020 mm. so on what basis do you say that the elections is not avoid at that point in time when before he was going to go into the elections before he was going to be sworn in and all of that he had no allegiance to any country his certification has come out in fact what happened was that Certain groups belonging to the MPP in Assen North wrote a petition to the Electoral Commissioner mm. indicating to the Electoral Commissioner that Jachi Kwesin did not qualify to contest that election because he had allegiance in other countries. So she invited him as far back as November mm. to come and then present his documentation. So when she invited him, he went, he submitted a certification to her. And based on that, she indicated that he could proceed and do them, go about, go, go, go have his elections. And he went for the elections. He won the elections. And then now we come back because, but you see, you can understand all of that. Mm. Why it is that difficult is because the MPP had lost in the 2020 elections from 169 seats to 137. They were virtually battling with us to have just one extra seat, just so they can have that at the top you understand? So it, it, it's uh, politically, it was understandable that they had to do everything possible. But you don't, you don't, you don't kill someone to try to solve a problem. You don't do that. Mm. You no, know, we always keep telling them like you have to follow the process. The same people who call us and tell us, look, let's follow the process. Let's go through. We are, we are, we are, we are the pioneers of uh, rule of law, and we are the ones who are the lawyers, and we are the ones who have the judges. The same people who hold that book and tell you, let's all follow it, are the same people who trample over it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So at the end of the day, Justice Atuba has spoken. And he's one of the fine gentlemen. In fact, he's one of the he's one of the Supreme Court judges yeah. who have who have actually, you know, made changes mm. and, and, and said things that people had the fear to basically put it out. Mm. He has and, and there, there's no word he could have used better rather than say that, you know, it was scandalous. Mm. It's totally scandalous. It doesn't make any sense. Because you see, KMJ, we all can read. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When the constitution is put in front of us, we can read. Mm. You can, we can talk about, yeah, there are certain parts of it that, you know, you need a Supreme Court to... A bit technical. That technical. You need, yeah, you we know. need that. But when, 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 when the constitution is telling you that, look, in order for you to become a member of parliament, you don't have to own allegiance to any country at the time of your elections. How, how can that be constituted? How do I need a lawyer mm. to explain what that means to me? Like, it, has, it just doesn't make sense. Mm. For me, I think this is, this is a perfect platform. He has indicated it. The case is still in court. The other thing that he mentioned, which is very interesting, is this. A high court sat on the case. Yeah. Ruled on the case. There was no point for the Supreme Court. If he, in fact, what, what happens is that when you, when, you go to a, when you go to a lower court and then you get a judgment and it is moved to a higher court, what happens is that you're going for an appeal or you want, you're going for, for a, what do you call it, a, for interpretations. When you move, what they do is to take the case as it is 
and then look at it and then make whatever amendments they want to make. You do not start a new case. You don't initiate it and the entire no, process is again. No, you don't. Because there's a process and it has gone through a certain system. And in any case, if you want to even restart the case, it should go back. There should be an appeal. But you bring it to the Supreme Court and then you start an entire case. Mm. Because of course, you know, you see, the details of every case, when you start from the beginning to the end, it is the things that happens, the kind of uh, witnesses that come into play, the kind of evidences that are put in place, that brings out the final judgment. Mm. So in order for you to get a different judgment, automatically what you have to do is to probably go back and then wipe out all of that and then start to, to create the system that allows you to give you the new judgment that you have. It's kind of lost. Mm. Seth. KMJ. Mm. Same issue, right? <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me say good morning to you and good morning to our viewers out there. I can't start this show but not um, extending my greetings to my national party, the NPP, mm. from regional to constituency to national, for having given me this privilege to be here this morning to represent the party, serving our nation in this capacity. Mm. I believe that um, our presence here is to enlighten our viewers. Tell them what the matters are and let them know what we are doing for them. Mm. Now, the issue before us is about um, Judge Equation's yeah. um, judgment by the Supreme Court, which Justice of the Superior Court formally brings out his views on those judgments that were made. I stand to differ on the point my brother here makes mm. that. Um, his comment that the decision by the Supreme Court is scandalous. I believe that his comments are rather scandalous of the courts, which he once belonged to. My reasons are these. Now, the Constitution makes it clear that the courts or the body that is responsible for the interpretation of our Constitution is the Supreme Court. I believe, KMJ, you are aware of that. Mm -hmm. So I doubt where my brother here gets his information from and says that the decision by the Supreme Court was scandalous. Now, the matters before the Supreme Court then was a, an issue of interpretation. Mm. And the body that is clothed with interpretative uh, 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 abilities are our Supreme Court. Unless my brother here doesn't agree with that. So if a high court, which is just applying the rules, but does not interpret the rules that are constitutional in nature, as in their judgment, or as in its judgment, and then the matter is forwarded to the superior court, the highest court of the land. A definitive judgment is pronounced on the matter. I doubt if this is scandalous, but I'm not surprised. It takes me back to once an, a, 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 a research put out by one Raymond Atuguba, Atuguba a professor of um, the University of Ghana whose research came out that, even though I don't agree entirely with his um, findings, mm. in part I agree with him that um, having reviewed cases that are adjud adjudicated by the Supreme Court of our land, he saw that most judges that were appointed by the NDC ruled in their favor in matters of political nature, or matters that were political in nature. Now, in his findings, he stated that out of the 13 judges who sat on the cases he reviewed, mm. who were appointed by the NDC, all ruled in favor of the NDC. And then, out of his findings, he said 16 judges who were appointed by the NPP, 13 also ruled in favor of the NPP. My point is that I am not surprised that he being appointed, or who, who was once appointed by the NDC government, is today telling us that it's scandalous because but he, he stated his the views reasons are why he stated the reasons his why inclination he to the NDC's uh, 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 belief or ideologies. Mm. That is why I believe he's making this. Uh, uh, but he statement. gave reasons why he's making those. And which reasons do you think are valid? Do you think these reasons are valid? You think it's not valid? What, what, makes, it, valid. what makes it invalid? Reasons are that. Because he mentioned that evidence, initiating evidences the were entire adduced. process again evidences were was totally unnecessary. Evidences were adduced. Mm. Like I told you, it wasn't the issue in its entirety that was reviewed. 
it was the constitutional aspect of the issue that was reviewed by the Supreme Court. Mm. And the Supreme Court is clothed with that powers to do such works. So I doubt where he gets his evidence from or his views from, which is why today he's telling us that the decision by the Supreme Court is scandalous. Like I told you earlier, I beg to differ on this matter. Mm. But like I said, when you look at his background and all his pronouncements in matters that came before him when he was on the bench, sh shows clearly that he's biased towards the NDC. So today, he finds it appropriate to tell us that, indeed, the Supreme Court, who sat on a genuine case, per Article 94, that talks about eligibility and the qualification criteria, spelling out clearly how one should qualify to be elected as a member of parliament. Today, as a renowned judge of his nature, comes back and passes that the same institution which he once said. I think he is to be the one to protect that institution and not coming out all because today he's on retirement and so he wants to turn his back on the very institution that he once represented. Mm. I remember in 2012, 2020, uh, 2013 election petition, in reading the final verdict of the day in I think August or so, all five parameters that were set or put before the Supreme Court by the petitioners. He, as a judge who sat on the case, as the president of the panel that sat, he voted against all the release of the petitioners. Am I to believe today that it was because he was appointed by the NDC that was why he voted against all the release that were sought by the petitioners? He must go back and come again. Mm. I believe that he, as a former member of the bench, must be the one to protect the institution, but not to come ambassador the very institution he once said. Okay. All right. Um, Can you, I, you'll, be, you'll be very quick for me so that we'll I move will, on to the I next um, um, so topic I, you want to talk about. I, I kind of um, somehow find it difficult to understand my brother. I have indicated here that when you say a member of parliament would not be, someone would not, would not qualify to be a member of parliament, if he owes allegiance to another country, the question we're asking is this, if he owes allegiance to another country, November 2019, the man says, I'm renouncing my allegiance. That is one. Two, before his election to be a member of parliament, the, the constitution indicates categorically that the, the person would not be eligible to be a member of parliament if at the time of his elections, at the time of his elections, he owes allegiance to any other country. How do you understand that? I'm just trying to figure out from you, like, how do you understand? If you say, if, if I tell you, for example, that Adele, you cannot enter this hall, you know, mm. you cannot enter this hall if it's past 6.30. What does it mean? Mm. But, but do you believe that? Uh, I'm just, it's a basic question. Like, is it a rhetorical if, question? Or you want me to no, answer? I want. You, I'm asking you, you to answer. If, if the constitution indicates. But do you know that elections are not just uh, uh, an event? No, no, no. But listen, it, listen, it is a listen. process. There is a name. I'm coming. There is. There is. Election listen. is not an I'm event. Coming, it's I'm a coming. Process. I'm coming. I believe coming. you know. So, so let me ask you this. So, okay. so we have a word called election, right? We have what we call nominations, right? It's a process. That's the same process he's talking about. Oh, I'm coming. Mm. It's a process. Mm. There's, a, there's a beginning. There's nominations, mm -hmm. right? Nominations is not elections. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you people shouldn't talk to us as though we're not, we don't have any intelligence. There's nomination. Nomination is a process you go through. When you're done with that, you're done with that. Elections is a different process. There's something, there's what goes but into election. Election is not an event. You start brother, from somewhere before brother, you end there. I'm coming. Granted. Yes. Granted, we didn't give you that. What is renunciation? Mm. What is renunciation? I don't want it. If I say I want to renounce, I've renounced. As far back as 2019, he says, I've renounced it. I don't want it. Submitted it. He says his passport's back to the American um, um, the um, Canadian, the Canadian uh, you know, country. The process of getting his certification went through. And then before his elections, he had his certification. What is all this Vula Balu going back and turning things upside down and making it look like... If, if I may all ask of us, my brother, what was the evidence of his renunciation? Ah, he submitted that. What was the, the evidence? The, no, the coming, evidence the is the certificate court, to present. Uh, and not just the intention. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm let, let me also give you this example. Coming. If I want to, uh, um, what do you call it, arrive at being elected as a member of parliament, right. can I just pick my documents on the day of election, submit it to the EC, and tell them that I have the qualification, so I want to stand as a candidate to be elected? Certainly not. 
certain law. Certain law. So you have, but, you have to present documents. But the, the, so the EC supervised all of those listen, processes. Listen, listen, my brother. Before the election took place, something happened. Someone submitted a petition to the Electoral Commissioner. This man cannot contest. EC says, come, show me the reason why we should allow you to contest this election. The man goes there, he says, oh, I renounced my certification. I started the process as far back as what I renounced in 2019. Mm. However, this is my certification. Electoral Commission says you can go and contest. Why? Why is the Electoral Commission not in court? Who is supposed to supervise the election? Who has the responsibility to supervise the election? Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> um, um, I, I doubt if, 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 if we're going to move on to the next If you get the analogy, if I submit documents to the passport of office that I want to get a passport uh, uh, document, does that guarantee my acquisition of the passport? It must be vetted and accepted. But the EC did the that. The EC did that. Get so it. why are you still going back and forth? The EC After did the that. Point, the EC submitted that. the document. The EC, the EC. Have you received I'm coming. The EC has those lawyers. documents to the EC, that indeed the EC, he has now the, uh, uh, the, so, 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 the EC has, has lawyers. I'm coming. The EC has lawyers. The EC These is are matters of choices. Oh. I know you know that. Okay. All right. So um, if, if uh, we're we're going to move on that. to the next topic. And the political uh, party has an interest in that. I don't think you can be growing the MPP. Okay, gentlemen, let's take our <laughs> let's take our attention just, now to the it uh, issue of cocoa boy. Now, the president of uh, mm -hmm. Concerned uh, Farmers uh, Association uh, is actually speaking about the issue of uh, you know cocoa and the fact that cocoa board, if it's collapsed, they should let them know so that they do not you know have to go back to them and let them uh, rule on how things are supposed to be done in terms of selling and all of that. So uh, he's been speaking about it on uh, Joy News. Uh, I'll, I'll begin with you, Seth. Uh, what, what do you make of this? If Cocoa Board is collapsed, they should let us know so that we have a way of selling our produce. The association, uh, you know, president is not happy about it. Mr. Bonsu is not happy about this. All right. Thank you for this topic. I would like to start by saying that uh, the NPP government, since inception from 2017 has so much worked hard to stabilize our economy and that of the Cocoa Bots, uh, uh, organization. Mm. Now, when you look at happenings within Cocoa Bot, it is no, it is not in doubt that indeed there have been significant improvements in all its activities. Even though there are challenges, I believe that if you have an organization. Said, try and speak up a bit for okay. me. Okay. If you have an organization mm. that has been able to increase cocoa in the past six years and about 10 months to a tune of about 833 cities, the, the increased margin mm. from that which we took and improving it. When you say that which we took yes. from the previous government, is yes. that what you're saying? From the previous government. Mm. When you check the difference between the amount or the pricing of a bag of cocoa then and now, we have been able to increase cocoa price by 833 cities. And the farmers are still complaining? If this is not significant the is or an improvement, I doubt if one can say that this is a decrease in the production sector. So in your opinion, the president is asking for so too much for the cocoa farmers? I believe that like Oliver Twist will always do. He's asking for more, and not that he's not seeing any improvement. Now, when you go to the cocoa sector, I belong to a family that is into cocoa mm. production. So I am not speaking from books, but I'm speaking from experiences. When you go to the cocoa farmers, they will tell you that since the inception of this government, we have engaged in what we call hand pollination, which hitherto was not in existence. You know what that has done to the cocoa farmers? It has improved their yield. So if a farmer was once getting about three bags of cocoa now he's reaping in excess of 10 bags or more not only that we have what you call extension officers recruitment which has helped to educate farmers on the best farming practices when you put that aside we've been able to do what we call replanting what that has done is that previously cocoa trees were infected with diseases but the government, through prudent measures, saw that it was affecting the production capacity of this country. So what the government did was that the disease crops should be cut down and they replanted. It wasn't at the expense of the farmers. The government took it upon itself, sponsored people to do that work. Now, we saw that when you do that to the farmers, their source of livelihood 
will be denied. And so what we do is that an acre of land, when cut down and then cultivated, mm. what we do is that we give the farmer 1,000 Ghana cities. Is this not an, incent uh, uh, an incentive? So why are they complaining right now? Because most, you put, I'm sure you are aware most farmers are now cutting down their uh, cocoa f uh, 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 trees and planting something else. Definitely. That was before. But now when you go, you could see that given the increase in the prices of cocoa, things have now turned around. So it is not for anything that the government in its wisdom saw that to motivate farmers, we should also institute what we call cocoa farmers pension scheme. First of its kind in our country. My mother is a beneficiary of that. <laughs> so I doubt if the president of Cocoa Farmers has averted his mind to all these happenings in the cocoa sector. I believe he wants more. That is why he's advocating for maybe a sale of the cocoa by themselves. But I, I'm doubting. But, but if do you, you know think the it will, think, think be, it will be the, the best? Do you think that it will be the best option for them? That wouldn't be the best option, especially knowing that they, they don't know what what exactly is happening with cocoa board. That wouldn't be the best option, and these are the reasons. Now, the price of cocoa keeps on fluctuating; it goes up mm. and comes down. In the event that the price of cocoa reduces, the government doesn't reduce the price of a bag of cocoa of the farmers. It keeps on paying the same amount, despite. The reduction but they know the, the labor that goes into whatever they are producing and they know how much it will be worth selling it by themselves the, to buyers. Most, mostly some of these farmers may be thinking about today or the current price of cocoa, not averting their minds to the exigencies that may occur along the way. But the government in its wisdom sees that in the event that the price of cocoa reduces mm. or comes down, it's going to affect the farmers. So to be able to stabilize the price of cocoa, that is why it has established a board that is responsible for regulating the prices of cocoa and so that we can pay a standard, a standard price mm. to the farmers in the event that even when the price of cocoa even goes down. So the, the president of the cocoa farmers telling us that the prices of cocoa is so much low or whatever, that is yeah. why they want the, to sell the, to the buyers themselves. The, the, they want to sell it to the buyers Directly. themselves. It's a dangerous advice is given. When you go to Cote d'Ivoire now, their price of a bag of cocoa is less than ours. We have been able to pay more, unlike before. Mm. So the government has seen that indeed the, 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 the efforts of our farmers are so much needed. And so government has come up with a lot of programs and policies to regulate the, the sector so that it will motivate our farmers to do more to boost our economy. I don't think that the president of the cocoa farmers has averted his mind to all these happenings within the cocoa sector. If so, not, mm. he wouldn't have said all these things. Now, when you look at the government's commitment to the welfare of farmers in the cocoa sector, it's not in doubt. Because when you look at this year alone, price of cocoa has been increased by 503 cities. As against in 2011, when NDC increased cocoa by five cities. Isn't it significant? For the past 50 years. But if you compare 2011 till now, a lot of things have changed. Oh, my brother, are you if telling you, me if that you're 503 cities no, if you're telling me is not significant no, enough? No, it's not about being significant. If it is added to your salary. Well, I'm not going personal, it's, it's but not, I just want you to relate. And, and that's where I don't want us to go, but yes. I, I don't also intend to make it look like that's what you're trying <laughs> okay. to do. What I'm saying is if you compare 2011 till now, and like you rightly said, there have been very significant changes yes. in terms of how the produce are, are done, fertilizers and all of sure. that. So if by that 2011 till now, the government decided to increase it to a certain percentage, do you think that it's not something that is worth whatever effort the, 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 the farmers have put into it? The, the, they are due their share of the national kick. That is what they've been giving. But is it not worth a, what a the farmers jump. are putting into it to make sure they produce enough cocoa but for us? Pay so if that pay amount pay. of money is what the government decides that I want to, you know, pay from 2011 to now. I'll go it's back. It's not worth it. Yes, I'll go back to the same statement I made earlier, that Oliver Twist will always ask for more. I okay. Believe so in, in your case, Nana Boati Bonsu is, is just asking for more. And yes, he's not asking necessarily for more because addressing a, spe a specific he's issue. He's asking for more. Let me give you the reason. Of Let me give you one significant reason which maybe he might not be aware of. For the past 50 years, in the whole of West Africa, this year, the increase or the jump in the price of cocoa by this government is a world record for the past 50 years. There hasn't been any country in West Africa that has been able to increase its cocoa price 
with such a margin. So I doubt mm. he must sit down with the government if he has any issue or any suggestion. We are welcome, welcoming descending views on board so that we can make the sector be better. Okay. We are not against any suggestive measures that are going to improve the sector. So if you have any alternative views to make the <coughs> sector better, you should bring them on board. Okay. That's what we are all looking for. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me move to Adele. Adel. KMJ, this whole conversation we're having comes down to value. Mm. If I had $100, in 2016 what it can buy in 2016 and what it can buy today is not the same yeah you have sat down and mismanaged the economy so much such that no matter how much money you give to anybody it has no difference kmg when you have 1000 ghana cities in your pocket today it's nothing i can tell you by the end of the day if you do uber three four five times buy one or two things send one or two monies it's gone it's gone yeah. like 1000 is no money 100 dollars is no money anymore. So when the people are crying, there's a reason why. What is the what is the price? What is the current price on the international market for cocoa? It's about three thousand seven hundred dollars, right? Mm. Okay. How much are you giving to the people? How much are you paying them? You're yeah. paying them you're, the, the amount of money that you're paying. As as far back as 20, um, 2016, we're looking at almost one thousand eight hundred there about mm. per ton. Mm. You're paying the people of Ghana one th per ton one thousand eight hundred and thirty seven. Subtract this 1,837 from 3,700, which is what the international market is paying us. What have you done? Can I ask what? you this question? No, please. You let me land. When I, you can write it down. You can, you can, no, no, you can write it down. So we're asking basic, basic questions. The people are saying, listen, the reason why cocoa price has gotten to 3,700 USD, obviously we all know that the things keep changing over and over. You're paying the people a little less than what we thought that you would have done during our time. We took part of these monies. So, so you're, you're taking 3700, you're giving them 1837, mm. pretty much. During our time, what we did was that we took part of whatever excess was left, which is not up to what the margins that you're making. We took part of that, and then we decided to buy what you call the free fertilizers. We buy the fertilizers and we give it to the people for free. You came and decided to sell the fertilizers. In your time, you indicated to us that the fertilizers which are supposed to go to the people for free were being sold and sent to Togo and Benin and blah, 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 and the NDC people are selling the fertilizers and the likes. And that when you come to power, you make sure that it gets to the people. When you came to power, your solution was to sell it half the price so it goes to the people. Not for sale fertilizer, not for sale, yeah, also not for sale. Don't sell it. It don't be so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying. Then you come to power, you take the not for sale fertilizer, you do 50%, say, okay, we know it is not for sale. But during the NDC time, the, the fertilizer doesn't get to you. So in order for it to get to you, this time we will sell it to you at 50%. Who does that? Yes, we can agree to the fact that, yes, there has been increments in the production of cocoa. Mm. No two ways about it. Well, the fact is that the fact is there. However, we're saying that the value the people had in terms of the monies they received as far back as 2015, 2016, 2013, and what that money could do for them at that time. The money you're giving them today, even though in terms of it has Wait, an increment. It's not even though there's an increment, it's insufficient. Basic, basic. Because you 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 dealing you dealing USD back in cities. Mm. Some of the farmers are complaining about the fact that when they sell now to even get roofing sheets, it's a problem. It's a problem to even get roofing sheets. It's a problem, and they're asking if cocoa world is collapsed, they should let them know so that they find their own ways of what of selling so, their products. This is basic. So yes, you may have increased the amount, but your mismanagement of the economy, your mismanagement of our currency has made it so much such that in as much as there has been an increment, that increment has no value. Basic. Don't, look, no matter how you turn it upside down, it doesn't make any sense. I know what, to, look, in 2016, in 2016, when you want to buy sugar, we know how much it is. You cannot tell me that if I used one Ghana CDs or if I used back then, if I used two CD 50 pesos to buy one cup of sugar, and today I am using, say, five Ghana CDs, some six, some are even selling 7.5. You're telling me that the value of these two is the same. We know what we bought then. We know what we're buying today. We know what milk is. Milk is selling for eight CDs. How much do you to buy? 3.5. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in terms of value, even though there has been an increment, still, what that money is supposed to buy and what it used to buy for them back then. Back then, cement was how much? 35. Today, 95. So yes, you may, say, let's say for example, yeah, 95. 
Why do you buy your salmon at 95 cities? It, it, depends, it, it depends. It depends. Why? On the it brand anyway. Why? What are you saying? I'm also into building. So, so how much is so it? I know. How much the is it? Cement. How much is it? Your figure is wrong. How much is it? <laughs> no, Seth, how much do you buy? I'm into co- I'm into co- it depends brand on the brand. Ah, what That's what I'm saying. saying. It ranges exactly between, exactly what between 74 the brand to 85 cities. Gaza. Between okay, so, 74 to so, so let, 85 cities. Oh, Just I'm yesterday. Mm. 42, now I'm coming. I bought cement for my way. For how much? It depends on the brand. Which brand? So which brand which did you buy? So I bought Gaza. At how much was it? At 78 cities. Which Gaza is sold at 78 cities now? I bought 42. 40, 42. Uh-huh. At 45. what price? At what price? 78 cities. Granted. Mate, granted. So let's say, let's say, let's say Gassem hmm? at 78 Ghana cities. We used to buy how much? 35. And you are saying. So it's still the same. So I'm saying that, let's say, <laughs> go forward, come back. You are still in the same Price city. of goods has never been reduced in Ghana. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it has. But you so are so the same way it becomes. The, the same way it becomes so insufficient. Don't, so don't, no, so don't. <laughs> the so same way it becomes but, insufficient. But, 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 my brother here forgets <laughs> that. As Bro, he's hey, talking about the rise of goods. You're talking, I'm sitting here. Okay, because you drew me, that's why I want to respond to you. No, when you come in, I can understand that you want to make arguments into it. But I'm saying that, in reality, in fairness, let's look at the issues and let's discuss it at this. What 10,000 Ghana cities would have done for you in 2010? Today, that 10,000 Ghana cities cannot do for you. It's basic. So when you're doing increment, in your head, you think, oh, we have actually done well. We have given them an extra 800 Ghana cities. That extra 800 Ghana cities cannot buy them, say, 10 packs of Ufi sheets. Mm. This is the problem for them. So it is not enough to just say we have increased. Whatever increment has to, has to come into the lives of the people and make a difference for them. Your own mismanagement. Perhaps if you had managed the city very well, like Baumia said, and you had managed it well, maybe this 800 Ghana cities would have made a difference. But today, it is not. So don't go there. All right, Seth. Um, uh, let, 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 let me quickly respond to part of, of the, the his uh, uh, argument. Now, he makes the point that we are paying 1,821 cities as against, as against the international market. Uh, yes. Yeah. Now, way back in 2016, the spot price of cocoa mm. then was $2,950. But they gave the farmers 1,800. Why did they do that? Give the farmers? <coughs> the NDC the NDC gave the farmers 1,800. No do you know why? Mm. We don't base our sale of cocoa on the spot market price, right. but on an achieved price. Mm. When you say an achieved price, you are talking about a price that is derived as a result of the bargaining power between the buyers and, and the, the government or the seller, which is, which is agreed upon. We don't use the spot price because it keeps on fluctuating, like I said earlier. Mm. It goes up and comes down. So you wouldn't be able to base your pricing of cocoa on the spot market price. This is a basic fact. My brother should know. So I, I, I'm so, so, I'm so, so, so much disappointed in him this morning, telling us that we should use the spot market price to price our cocoa, which Kenji. has never been done since 1992. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so, so Kenji, why is he making this no argument problem, this no morning, my brother? Let me, let me help you, KMJ, briefly. <laughs> briefly, I'm coming. But do you agree that no. we've never used spot price you've, to do that? You've made a statement. Let me, let me come in. <laughs> KMJ, so he mentions here that in 2016, 2,950, and we give them how much? 1,800. 1,800. When you do the subtraction, you're going to get 1,150, which is basically what is basically left. Mm. Out of this 1,150, we still spent money to buy, you know, fertilizers. Part of that money, we still... And we are doing hand oh. coordination. Bro, when you're speaking, I'm here. Like, out of respect, <laughs> you understand? Sorry. We do, so 1,150, right? Yeah. 1,150, we take out of this, and then we still do, we still give uh, monies to buy fertilizers and the likes. Aside that, mm. we started what we call the pension scheme. We were taking part of this money to put down, and then, you know, for the, for the cocoa farmer suspension. It is inside. You put that. That's not a fact. I'm, I'm I do know that. Can I? Can I land? Can you? Can you use your pen? <laughs> can you use the pen? I beg you. I beg you. Please. Can you just write it? Okay. So, so 1,150. This is what is left. Today, the price of cocoa in the international market is 3,700 Ghana cities. You're still giving them 1,300 and this When you do the calculation, there's a difference of 1,900 USD. So, so in terms of value. Mm. So, so you are taking 1,000. You are keeping 1,900 USD today. We kept 1,150 and they used part of it to give it back to the, the cocoa farmers. Mm. Today, it is still the price of cocoa is 3,700. You are giving them 1,800. We gave 1,800 back then. You are giving 1,800 today. But the reason why the 1,800, the same amount you are giving today, you think is huge is because when you convert from USD to CD, the CD has depreciated, so the money looks big. How is that difficult to understand? You also mentioned that there's been some interventions that they've put together. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. 
One it, thousand. Well, uh, uh, I'm not there are about, some, saying, uh, some of the interventions. There are six significant interventions in the cocoa sector. So is that what this man is? His are you over here? No, no, no. Said so. I'm asking you. So, <laughs> it, it, there's, I mean, obviously, there's some sort of. Um, well, if you compare, they were, no, they were no intervention. Adele, they were if, no intervention. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, if, you compare, yeah. said, if you compare the amount of money he's, he's stating over here Three and seven. the issue of the fertilizers, which of course are some of the interventions anyway, so sure. if you compare that, it means that um, they were spending more on the fertilizers or the interventions they were giving to the people as against what you're spending today. You have been, been selling the fertilizers, the money, exactly, just, just as the I money told you're you. given. Spot it's market not prices of cocoa are not used in determining price no of cocoa. No one is talking about spot camp. market. I am saying no, that, that. That one you have pay the money that. You are you get it. Pay the money so, you are receiving. So, so when you look at the price today, it tells you that indeed, <laughs> in the subsequent years, price of cocoa is going to go out or up significantly mm. as compared to this year, mm. which even the farmers are glorifying. So when you check the price today, which we are giving to the farmers, mm. giving the Achieve price, which we use in calculating the back of whole price, compared to this year's price, which is around three thousand six hundred and above, yeah. it is going to determine next year's price. So the end, this issue come their next mm. in twenty twenty four. They are going to see a significant jump in the price of cocoa to our farmers, which is what Interesting. is put in whom, here. Interesting. Whom, we'll, 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 we'll hold your words to it. I mean, much is expected. <laughs> 2,950, <laughs> Emma, 1,800. Why budget 3,7, Emma, 1,800? After how many years in depreciating our city, I still sitting so in So that's why I mentioned interventions okay. that have been made by the government. Yeah, I beg you, I beg you. All right, which so... Which you attest to it. <laughs> but they are still crying. They are sitting oh. here, they are crying. They are sitting I here, saw shouting. farmers who were praising Anna Adam Kwe Kufado on the day of the announcement. Yes, Kwe Kufado. Praising Anna Adam Kwe Kufado on the day of the announcement of the price. So where's the president coming from now? So he's just so you think that he's just a single person. Oh, he's just a single, just a single, single person, person oh. who is expressing see. his views. You see, this and is I, not a representative of the farmers. And, and, and like I'm telling you, no, you mean Trish this is always his cry is not a representation of uh, I don't the think farmers. it's a representation That's what you think? of the entirety of the cocoa farmers because wow. my mother has not cried. My friends who are into cocoa Your mother is just a single not, person have, in the have world. Have <laughs> so just as he's a single person, he's so, the way he's the mother is, mother right. is also a single person. Interesting. Or any other person <laughs> is engaged in cocoa farming, it's also a single person. So that's a single view. <laughs> if you just join us here on the show, this is News Flash. We're having conversations around some major issues that have come up. We've taken a look at the cocoa issue, just what we just did. And we've also uh, taken a look at the uh, Jaju Kwesin ruling. Now we're going to move on. Uh, to another issue, a very important issue, uh, which happens to be the dam spillage that has brought a lot of pressure on the country right now. Now, the uh, Food and Agriculture Minister, uh, Brian Echampon, <coughs> is speaking about uh, some food emergency uh, that has been triggered by the spillage and uh, also the fact that he's assuring and reassuring Ghanaians that will live up to task. And well, in his own words, he says the Volta River is used for a lot of vegetable farming. And so if we have such a situation, then it tells you that we have to cut, uh, we have to act quickly, else we will face a tomato, onion, and general vegetable challenges in the country. And so, uh, I mean, indirectly, there's some sort of food emergency uh, that uh, he's calling for, which obviously has been triggered by the issue of the uh, dam spillage. Let's, let's pick some messages uh, here on the show. When we come back, we'll continue with the conversation. Now, this one over here says, uh, it's from uh, Philip Abochi from Facebook, and it says that uh, it's coming all the way from Keta. It says, good morning to the listeners. Sometimes the comments of NPP leaders to the good people of Votarians are getting out of hand. Uh, the sanitation minister is not serious. Nobody came to Mepe uh, to let the people evacuate. The NPP leaders who think Votarians are their chewing sticks must stop uh, this kind of myopic behavior. Uh, that's Philip, uh, and it's on the back of the issue of the sanitation minister who spoke about the fact that they were given uh, prior warnings to evacuate the place, but they never did until this, uh, you know, tragic situation happened. Um, another one over here says, good morning, prime morning. Uh, it wouldn't take uh, Justice Atuguba to tell me, reasonable person like uh, me, that Supreme Court judges have been heard in their decision for the past six years ago. Uh, even some of their decisions are threats to our democracy. Nana Jedu from Drobo sent in that one. 
let's see if we have more. Uh, the government spent so much money on our security institution every two weeks, every month, uh, just to ensure that uh, they carry out their work uh, due, uh, diligently without complaining of service benefit, just to make sure that the land is well protected. My point is that I just don't understand why there is high level of fraudulent activities in the system and the security institution cannot track these things down to make our society safe. Love, respect. Nana, Ironda uh, Babako uh, Koko Misa uh, from Accra sent in that one as well. This one says, Heidi from Pig Fan, uh, let NPP man know that uh, if a bachelor liar uh, that is married, if a bachelor lies that he is married, he's only deceiving his manhood. Uh, where in Ghana did he buy Gassem for 74 <laughs> Ghana cities? The people should credit Ghanaians with some respect. So the issue of your. Uh, <laughs> Buying a 74 has been <laughs> has been in contention. Uh, good morning, my brother. Uh, truth be told, the rule of the law and uh, the rule of law, if you mean, and the democracy we are pr uh, practicing in this country has been thrown to the dogs by this government led by President Nana Ato. The AG is doing more harm than good to this nation. My brother, are you aware our assets have been sold in the UK uh, to settle judgment debt? And we are where we are today simple because of the advice given by the AG to cancel the such uh, judgment. This is the same AG who is in the courts uh, trying hard to defend party functionaries involved in Kalamse. So no wonder. Indeed, the future is pregnant. Uh, what the NPP guy in your studio is doing is to attack the person of justice uh, at Tuguba and uh, not to speak to the issues. Tell him to uh, tell him to speak to the issues and stop insulting our intelligence. They should give us a break. Um, sometimes you should add your name to it and uh, it will be good for us. Uh, this one says, sometimes I doubt if some of these political party reps are for the various topical discussions on the media are psychologically and morally upright. It often gets difficult to relate some of their comments to moral standards of life. I keep asking, do these uh, persons really know uh, that telling lies and defending falsehoods is an inhuman attitude and it's an impunity to their integrity? Uh, do they actually <laughs> listen to themselves after presenting on TV and radio? Do they have partners at home? And if they do, do their partners listen to them at all? What does these partners tell their lying spouses after each show? Uh, what kind of home are these individuals establishing? Home of liars uh, from father to mother to children. Ghana's future is in the hands of wrong heads. Most of our leaders today cannot be chosen for character, attitude and integrity role modeling. It would be a disaster for a child today to model the words and attitude of some of our leaders today. All right, so uh, that was a long one. Um, uh, the attitudes of these leaders have naturally planted wickedness in the minds and hearts of the young Ghanaians of today. I wonder how the days ahead of uh, would be. Now we have started re uh, recording female robbery at gunpoint, shooting and killing citizens. I beg to ask, do, these, uh, do those we have handed the country to really have uh, hearts to feel? Do they have brains to reason and do they actually have conscience to measure their actions? To me, it seems that we are being led by people with inhuman hearts, uh, people with minds folded and branded with wickedness, sealed with revenges and more to it, uh, wheeled on the ties of greediness. And uh, Ghanaian leaders and their spokespersons would have a different level of hellfire to bear. All right, so like I said, do well to add your names to it when you send us messages like that. Now, new day, new problem with new solutions. A time came NDC national executives bastardized and chastised the judicial service of Ghana as uh, unanimous FC and uh, creating an impression that lawyers and judges are against NDC. Now, deceived their followers for winning the 2020 general elections and later resulted in blame games among themselves. Judge Kwesin will definitely face the wrath of the law for breaching the constitution of the republic the current price of cocoa is a headache to the ndc making them uncomfortable for the uh, increase now farmers are happy and are expecting another increment next year the elephant is the winning symbol richard mensa price because in tiny sent in that one do we have another one that we can go through real quick now this one says good morning chief please there's no money to purchase cocoa and i'm from ot uh, sent in that one. It says there's no money to purchase cocoa. I like that. Now, the local content law also requires that uh, foreign supermarkets accept made in Ghana goods at their shop space at commission, uh, but they refuse the made in Ghana products when we go to them. Uh, somebody should fight for us because they are talking all, our, uh, they're taking all our market uh, with nothing left 
uh, from the Ghanaian sad. We need a redeemer. Patrick in Accra sent in that one. Okay, so that will be all for our comments. You can also keep yours coming through. We'll definitely make time to read them. But uh, before we got into the comments, uh, we're, uh, we're actually talking about the uh, Food and Agriculture Minister, uh, Brian Champon, uh, speaking about some food emergency that has been triggered by this village of the dam. Uh, let me begin with you, um, Seth. All right. So on the issue of the Minister for Agri speaking to the interventions made by this government, it's not in doubt. Mm. Try and speak up for me, please. All right. Mm. So when you look at the agri sector through the support of the um, World Bank, mm. gives an amount of 40 million Ghana cities, <laughs> all in an attempt to revamp the farming system in the affected areas. Mm. Now, we all attest to the fact that since this government came into power, our focus has been that we should be able to stabilize our economy through agriculture and other auxiliary uh, interventions. So we came out with what we call planting for food and jobs, which has yielded so much significant results to the extent that unlike before, where we are complaining of shortage of food today, we don't hear such news again. Mm. So I believe that the government's effort in stabilizing the agriculture sector, especially those in the affected areas in the Vota region, part of Greater Accra and then the Eastern region, is not in question at all. So this is what I believe in. When you put that aside, you could see that even the VRA has voted an amount of 10 million cities, all in support of these victims. Mm. Not only that, the NADMO as an organization responsible for such disasters have been so responsible, setting up about 20 relief centers to give them comfort in these trying situations. All these are evidences to the effect that this government is not oblivious of the challenges that these individuals have. But you also understand that there's, there's, one, there's one thing mentioning all these amounts of monies you have mentioned in aid. And another thing, making sure that those monies are given to those that properly used. Is, exactly. That is why we Which have, has always been our biggest issue. That is why we have supervising agents. So the Ministry of Agriculture, the VRA, I believe they are not just giving the money without monitoring. They have specific duties to supervise these uh, interventions so that they are properly utilized to their fullest. And, and, and that is and, what and I believe. And you're very certain that in the next that is what I believe. So far, so, I have not heard have of any untoward action by any of these institutions. That are it's, it's early days, that. yes, because I mean, in in three months or more, we'll, we'll be getting to this conversation again. Definitely, I believe that that is why we have institutions that are responsible for these uh, interventions. Mm. So mm. those who are clothed with these powers to supervise, I believe they should clearly follow these interventions. And make sure that these decisions are implemented the latter. Not forgetting the road ministry's uh, five million dollars, which mm. has been set aside to 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 rehabilitate roads that will be affected. Mm. So these are all interventions that this government is making. We believe that every sector or every part of this country should be properly taken care of, irrespective of where they may find themselves. So those in the Adan areas those in the Asujama area, those in the Vota region predominantly, are all part of this country. Which is why we have not turned our back on them, because we believe that the president's responsibility is to ensure that all citizens are safe mm. and properly catered for. So I believe that just as president, in about less than 12 hours, having returned from his trip abroad, went there to solidarize with them, same will he do in all situations come any event similar to this. Mm. So I pray that these institutions that are responsible for these interventions should properly take care of them. My little uh, uh, opinion, which I may add, is that just as they have been affected, you know, when you go to situations like this, psychologically, you are not sound. Mm. I will plead with institutions that are responsible for psyche should intervene, speak to these people. Not only that, as an educationist or somebody who is interested in the welfare of uh, children, children whose education has been, have been denied as a result of this disaster should be 
given an uh, 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 intermediary intervention so that the education is not truncated or not adversely affected. And I believe uh, just about a day or two ago, I heard that the Ministry of Education has come on board to put in interventions that will not just help these children to further their education, but to have sound education over, uh, uh, over there, especially areas that have been affected. So uh, I would like to just plead with corporate institutions, individuals, not only should we look at the government, because as individuals, we also have our personal responsibilities to help in such situations. Mm -hmm. I've heard individuals who have been there, even the NDC I learned were there to help. But this is what we are all looking for. This is a national issue. Mm -hmm. So in situations like this, we shouldn't make political capital out of such situations. Mm -hmm. But you should look at this as a, national, of, issue. As a national issue, and then we bring all hands on deck to remedy citizens who have been affected in this uh, uh, regard. All right, thank you. Um, Adele. James, you made a mistake by indicating that we shouldn't make political capital out of this. And, <laughs> and the reason, no, he made a mistake. He made a very he big mistake. He already made a political yeah, he made, capital out yeah, of it. Yeah, he made a very big mistake before indicating stating that. that. Look, let me, t let me tell I'm you something. Mistake. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. KMJ, first of all, before I even go into this subject, let's go back a little bit. 2020, <clears throat> there was COVID the whole world. We were all struggling, looking for ways and means to basically survive. You didn't have money. We didn't have money as a state. Other countries around the world sent us money to use to help our people, take them to the hospital, take care of them, make sure everybody's okay. You carried the money and gave it to your MP to go and campaign. To an extent that someone from the northern region indicated that even the one that was given to her, she ended up giving it back to the party she didn't use. Why? Because there was a fight as to how much was given to who and how much was given to COVID money for the lives of your people. But you see, this one is different. Look, if you ask me, I have said this continuously. And when this topic came, the first thing I said was that this thing is deliberate. And I'll tell you why it is deliberate. The, the dam spillage is deliberate. deliberate. It's deliberate. On, on the part of what, the NPP? On the part of government, it's deliberate. Can you believe this? Oh, <laughs> boy, when you're speaking, I'm here. Please, don't distort. I don't know. Right? Go ahead. I go ahead. Yeah, what makes it so? <laughs> I'll tell you. Mm. <laughs> Before we even come to what they're doing now, let's talk about it. KMJ, I cited this example here in the studio with Rosalind. You have this. It is your dam. Mm. Or it's your cup of water. You need water to this level to be able to produce electricity. Mm -hmm. You have a buffer between where you produce and what and the, the can be on the top. and the limit at the top. You have excesses. Yeah. As far back as November 2022, VRA calls Nadmo and says the water levels and the way it's rising, it's a problem. We need to deal with it. You sit down. It rises, 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 rises until it gets to the point where the dam starts to vibrate. Then now you're running from the dam. <laughs> You know, the, the arm starts to vibrate. Mm. Mm? And then you decide that, oh, at this point, there's nothing we can actually do about it. But listen, who doesn't know that 150 billion liters of water will create havoc? Who doesn't know? You have gathered 150 billion liters of water. You want to open it into the system. You don't know what it will do. Are you kidding me? What wisdom do you have then? What have you studied? What is the use of the people that have been placed at VRA in charge of spillage? So you can't directly blame the, the government then? Because Why? The, like right now, the government has put people in place to ensure that, Who did that? these things do not Who happen. Who did that? Who did that? Who, the people ultimate who have been put in, who have been ultimate put in place responsibility. by the, the right? Who supervises? Who asks questions? Mm. Those are institutions exactly. that have been put in place. I'm not disputing. I'm saying so, that. So we attack the institutions and then attack government for this. I'm not disputing. Okay. All the institutions are under government. Mm -hmm. Why? With this pillage in 2010, we were in government. Mm. We had the, 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 the amount of water that was supposed to be displaced. We all knew mm. what we had in 2016. Yeah. As compared to what we had today. Why didn't that happen? Because there's leadership. Mm. There's leadership. You understand? You don't pile this amount of water and decide to open it up and say you don't know what kind of chaos it will create. It doesn't make sense. So what's, so the, what's now, the benefit of what they tend to get from getting the spillage done? Uh, what else? For political... Look, let me tell you something. When the MPPs, and I'm saying this emphatically, I'm not missing words, mm. and I'm saying it's on national television. When the MPP is embarking on something, don't look at it from the surface. Look, KMG, toilet facilities, toilet
toilet facilities opened in the flood. Graveyards washed. Are you with me? Mm. Graveyards washed. Mortuaries washed. All of that in water. All of that. The people are living there. In Okujesu, in Okujesu, in Abla, Abla yeah. you have water in the middle. People are on an island on this side, about 1,500 people on the island. On the other side, there are people. Military comes and says, we've been deployed. We're, we're asked to leave. Who does that? 26,000 people displaced. Then when you have an opportunity to talk to us, you come and tell us that, oh, but we told them to leave. Are you kidding me? We told them to leave. To go where? Go where? You are telling 26,000 people, 30,000 people to move. Go where? Where should they go and live? Then today you come and sit here and you're telling us that, oh, but we are, we've given some 40 million. We've given some 20 billion. Five we've million. given some 5 million. What are you talking about? KMJ, let me read something to you. Okay? I just want to give you a brief. So, the Constitution indicates something about the state of emergency. Article 31, emergency powers. Mm. It says the president may act in accordance with the advice of the Council of State by proclamation published in the, gaz published in the Gazette, declare this, that a state of emergency exists in Ghana or in, a, in any part of Ghana for the purpose of the what? And provisions of this constitution. I'll take you straight to nine. When you come to nine, nine says what? The circumstances under which a state of emergency may be declared under this article include a natural disaster and any situation in which any action is is, um, is in, in, any action is taken or is immediately threatened to be taken by any person or anybody or persons, which one is calculated or likely to deprive the community of the essentials of life. So when you even sit down, mm. if you had done your calculations and you have you have planned, you would have known that. This thing we're about to spill, 150 billion liters of water. This is how much havoc it will create. This is where it will go. We have graveyards. We have this. We have. That's why I say they don't plan. We have graveyards. We have this. Then the president looks at it and says, mm, "Baby, idea, Koi. We need to come up with a state of emergency for this particular area. What do we do? Immediately you do that, you have international countries coming into your aid to give you monies. Then you start planning, where do we move them to? Oh, Saglemi is there, let's move some here. Oh, let's set up some tents. How can we move them? You cannot tell me that you're walking with your daughter on the streets. She wants to cross the street. You know better. Why we, we go for elections and why we are giving powers is because the people assume that we know better. We say we are economics, right? You people come, you said, oh, we are, we are economists. You know, we, know, we understand these things. We, we know how to manage the country. They say, take it. So we assume you know better. So when you are up on top of the dam and you know what is on top of the mountain and the people are down there, they don't know what is going on. And you say you have done simulation. And the simulation you did was not able to affect the people to understand that this is how much problem we're about to face. Then you come and sit here and tell me that we told them to go. So, okay, when you told them to go and they didn't go, then you left them. So you want to sit in your car and you are driving and you have a seatbelt and you wear it, you, you are supposed to wear it, you don't wear it. And the police arrest you, you say, well, it's my life. So I right. leave you. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to tackle our very can, last can issue. I respond? Um, to but you have to be very quick for me. We've got yeah, only five quick. minutes to do this and we have a last topic to talk about. So please See, do it quick for me. When you have a dangerous political party, you should be careful <laughs> that they tell us to declare that place what? A state of... Emergency. emergency for what reason because oh, um, there's displaced now, we lives. had circle disaster mm. which about 120 human beings lives were lost the president muhammad then declared circle a state of emergency mm. remember we jada mm. spirit displaced human beings even lives were lost did he declare that place a state of emergency or did he declare a state of emergency over there they should give us a break. Mm. We know what we are doing. We are helping our country. We are not declaring a state of emergency just to sue them because they want political advantage to annex to the throne of uh, 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 the highest office of this country. The annex to this highest office is a danger to the lives of Ghanaians. Circle disaster, natural disaster, in Suto, Nankupo and Freyan country say in Suto. God called you and told you to go. I, I, yes. I, I, oh, I, please, I please, please, so, please, so, please. Why are you so, thinking I'm sitting that, here? That was a natural disaster. <laughs> what are you saying? Ah, <laughs> so, 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 this was a new man. Can you, so can you, 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 can you
Can I have a dam? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Data what are you what talking about? In terms of Kendrick. water. When, when yeah, human beings were like lost, <laughs> right? Over Kendrick, one or something, saying, human beings were No, no, no. Okay, okay, no problem. Said, we're no caught problem. in that said, disaster. Let, let, let's be honest. Can I, can I, can I? Did Muhammad declare no, let, no, no, a state I, I, don't, I don't even want us to go with that. I don't want us to even draw what I was. Muhammad is a dangerous politician. You should be careful of him when he makes a comment. He has another reason for saying that. These are two different things, and you should be honest with yourself. The national disaster that happened was rainfall. What we're saying now is How that long did you take it to receive? The institution that manages Are you place, telling me that? Please, wait, 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 wait. The dance village I, I'm not saying a rainfall and MPP members That is not, no, that is not the case. Seth, let's be honest. That's not the case. There's an institution that actually <laughs> monitors the average of rain that goes into the town. Exactly. And, and those institutions can... Unless make, you want to talk, this is the make, first time no, you are having a dance village in this No, it is not. Have you ever seen a dance village? Have you ever seen a dance village? You're not to the conversation. I am saying... Let me listen to you. The issue of those uh, the, the natural disaster and the human one that we're talking about is two different things, and that's what I want us to. Uh, it's what not even about whether now? it's the emergency or what. What are the differences? I'm now? saying that there's an institution that manages how much water that goes into the dam and knows at what point it's supposed to be spilled, right? Sure. So if he's making a, 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 a the analogy of the rainfall that came, that was a totally different. But are you aware that there's a climate change? And so the pattern so, of rainfall is oh, not as so, compared so, okay, to the previous so years. You know, the so you can't compare this year to the no problem. Problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. problem. We have we've had it previously. At and so it's same time. KMJ. I, I ask you a simple question. Is the rainfall an MPP member's room? It's not about the rain getting into it. It's about how much management that has gone into the rain. His analogy will not suffice in this context. Because the rain is not from an MPP member's room. KMJ, KMJ. So now uh, he says, uh, no, no, I'm coming, I'm coming. He says, he says, oh, oh. And you tell me the oh, government oh, is deliberately oh, selling no problem. water. Patience, patience, Meba. See, he that says, like, he like says, like he says, like he says, like he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, oh, but you know that, uh, you know, that, that there's been a change in weather and all Climates. of that. Climate change and what all What is not in doubt? Oh, I'm coming. But you know, but you know there's change. You know that. So you make your argument. No, but you know that. And the right answer. So if you know, if you know that, and the institutions know that there's been, there's been climate change, and they know that there's a chance that, you know, water, the water will keep rising to an extent that as far back as November 2022, you indicated that there has to be spillage. You are sitting here telling me that it's uh, natural Give me some comments Paul to me. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do our last thing. <laughs> People are just stopping. Oh, no. uh, uh, this one says, good morning, prime morning. The NPP government has failed in all sectors of the economy. Uh, the NPP guy should stop what he's doing. He bought cement back where and for how much? Uh, they should this keep this deceiving really themselves. Out. We'll vote for them out. We'll vote them out in 2024. EA Metal Nunu Jr. sent in that one. So, this 74 uh, cities thing you of cement has always has been in doubt yeah, since. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's been contested since. Do we have another comment? That I can have that. Opemu Woyome says, kudos to Seth of Faye. Brilliant submission. That's a good one for you. Uh, can we have another one over here? And uh, if that is all we have, then we can wrap up. All right, so that'll be all for our comments uh, this morning here on the show. And that'll be our <laughs> conversation this morning here on News Flash. I want to say a big thank you to Adele Omar, communication team member for the NDC, joining us this morning. He's a family here. Uh, Seth Ophir is joining us for the first time. He's going to be here. You're going to be seeing him uh, quite often. He's a writer, a uh, communication team member for the NPP. Gentlemen, thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, thank you, indeed. Uh, thanks to you also for all watching right. this segment.